Psalms chapter 75 to the chief musician al Chishkeveth, which means destroy not, a psalm or song of Asaph. Unto thee, O God, do we give thanks. Thanks belongs to God. Always. God's the one that gives it all to us. And we're going to see something in a minute. It's not our employer. It is God that gets the credit. Man doesn't get it. God should get it. Unto thee do we give thanks. Repeat it twice. Verily, verily. Double, strong, emotional fact. Thanks belongs to God. For that thy name is near thy wondrous works declare it's all based upon God everything when I shall receive the congregation I will judge uprightly Paul writes to the Corinthian church that when there is a matter of law you don't go to the to the lost courts the lost judge the lost jury you are to go to the church Actually, Jesus set, sets a principle. You ought to go to the person first. If you can't resolve the matter, you take a witness with you. And if you can't resolve the matter after that, you take it to the church. Too many people go right to the church before they follow the procedures. And Paul says, let there be somebody in the church who, very low, who, who has no situation, who has no position in the church, somebody who just comes to church and serves the Lord and does right, let him be the judge. We're not to go to the world for our judgments. Israel was not to go to the nations for their judgment. They were to go to the priests. That's what God requires. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it, Selah. Well, Peter says, the element shall melt. The pillars, the, the Bible speaks of the earth having pillars. Now what that is, I have no idea. But with the revelation that I can see the Bible, and you, you don't have to take this, there may be a day that we're going to see the pillars exposed when the earth dissolves. You see all around Rome pillars in the buildings and all that. Where did that come from? Satan knows something. I said unto the fools, deal not foolishly. What are you to do as a Christian? Save their lost fools. Stop it. Don't do it no more. Get right. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Get knowledge. To the wicked, lift not up the horn. Now the horn is strength. It's power. And that is pride. Don't lift yourself up. Don't lift up who you are and what authority. If you're given, which we're going to look at in the next verses, if you're given authority, don't let it go to your head. Pray over that position that God's going to give you. Pray that you do right. Now verse 5 is a instruction that somebody who teaches people how to sing, this is a rule. And God wrote it. Lift not up your horn on high. That's, that's what we just read in verse 4. There's another verily, verily, a double statement. And very important as mentioned twice. Speak not with a stiff neck. You know, you're going to be in orientation or, or a speaker or singing. You don't straighten up your neck and start. You're going to hurt your vocal cords. You're going to strain your neck. That's something you do not do. There's a rule in the Bible right there. Promotion cometh neither from the east. Nor from the west, nor from the south, but God. What happened to north? That's where God dwells. 
Promotion cometh neither from the east nor west nor south, but God is the judge. Where do promotions come from? God. I didn't get that promotion at work. The other guy did. God get it. Don't blame your boss. Don't blame your employer. Don't blame the employees. Blame God. God is judge. Judgment for promotion are two words that go together. God will judge you either you're, you are for that promotion or if you are against that promotion. That is God's judgment. You take the president of our nation. I don't care if your vote came from the East Coast, the West Coast, or the South Coast. God judged this nation to give us the president that we desire. God judges your workplace to put that man over you. Go read Re Romans chapter 11, verse 6 chap verses of that chapter. He put us down one. Let's do a promotion. Somebody lost their position. Somebody lost their job. Somebody lost something. God is judge. And set it up. Promotion another. It's all on God. You butter up, influence, buy your way into your into your employer. In other words, you got a brown nose to your employer to get the position, get somewhere in that ladder, and it's not that's not the one. God is the one. You say, Well, I know people who who such a thing. Yeah, God's in control. Well, why didn't God get you know, I'm a Christian. Why didn't God because maybe God knows something you don't. Or maybe you're added to. God says no. Remember, God answers prayers three ways when it com comes to promotion. What we're talking about. Yes, no, not now. For in the hand of the Lord, there is a cup. Uh-oh. Remember the other night we talked about a cup. Now this is not a cup that you go and and you get a lemonade or soda pop and the wine is red how many people the other day oh Jesus drank wine all the people in the Bible drank wine well drink this wine reject Jesus Christ and go ahead and drink this wine it is full of mixture Ooh, it's got all kinds of things in it it's not just grapes got all kinds of things in it and he pours out the out of the same pours it out of the same bottle the same container the same cup but the dregs what is left on the bottom the settlement it's got something in this thing that just it's got a filthy bottom when you pour it out but the dregs thereof. See, he's he's got a cup. It's full of mixture. He's got wine, and he pours it out. He's pouring out the cup that's filled, and at the bottom of this cup has got disgusting things. All the wicked of the earth shall wring them out. Wring them out, and drink them. What? The, dr the dregs, that settlement, not the wine. You drink the junk at the bottom. What is the thing that you can see to, uh, something today? Take tequila. There's a, something that settles at the bottom. It's called a worm. This is judgment. This is not God handing you Welch's grape juice and here drink. Oh, look at that. Somebody didn't clean the cup. No, let's, uh, listen, you got a good good wine here. Good red wine. There's something else in it that makes it vile. And God will make the nations, those wicked, not Christians, the wicked of the earth, those who rebel against God, God's going to make them drink them. 
but I will declare forever. See, I'm not wicked. I'm not going to drink that, the psalmist says. I will declare forever. I will sing praises to God of Jacob. The wicked won't be singing. Listen, they think they're going to, all these rock stores that, that I grew up with, and you look at their record album, you look at the sleeve that the record came in, and you read all that stuff, and you read their testimony. They will tell you personally, we are going to hell, and we're going to party in hell. Satan is our ruler, and the Bible declares you're not going to be singing. You're not going to be having a good time. But forever, that's that's in the realm of God, the new Jerusalem, the new heavens, the new earth. They all be singing forever to God of Jacob. Those people that are in verse 8 are going to be singing to the God of anything but of Israel. The God of this world, the God of filth, the God of sin, the God that's a liar, the God that's the murderer, the God that's a new age, the God that's a religion, the God that is me, the God of religion, the God of whatever you want that's not Jesus Christ who is the way, the truth, and the life. That's in verse 8. Those who do what God told them to do, whatever dispensation you are, if you did what God told you to do, you're going to sing praises to God forever. The ones that did not get in the ark of, of Noah are verse 8. Noah and his, and his family, the eight people, are verse 9. Cain is verse 8. Abel is verse 9. Those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior is verse 9. Those who do not and choose to do whatever they want to do besides the blood of Jesus, Verse 8. Those Jews that do what God tells them to do in the tribulation and head off to Salem Petra, verse 9. Those who receive the mark and all that, verse 8. You know, I read something today. I think it was in Daniel. Somewhere. In my reading this morning. And if, you know, I've read this thing over and over and over, and it didn't hit me today. He says, as though, talking to Israel, as though they'll be as the sand of the seashore. And how many Jews are there since Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? There's been, you can't number them. Out of all the Jews, and this is what got me, a raiment will be saved. You realize when we get to heaven and see the descent, we're going to see Abraham, we're going to see Isaac, we're going to see Jacob. All the Jews that come from the 12 tribes of Jacob. You're only going to have a small part of the Jews who actually obeyed God and did right. No matter what dispensation they were in. You know the book of Daniel what? Mentions what? Four Jews? Where on earth did they all go? Why were there just four of them mentioned? Of the entire nation that, that was that was once God's people and did what they uh, didn't do what they were supposed to do. Then you go through Ezra and Nehemiah. That was it. The numbers that that, that went back. That was all. I mean, there weren't any more Jews. Look at all the Jews that Jesus dealt with in His time. And how many were there that he visited? Over 400? 412, count the, the, the apostles, and those that were in the upper room that night? 400, that's it? Three thousand got saved in Jerusalem at the time of Pentecost. You know how many Jews were in Jerusalem at Pentecost? That was one of the three times a year they were supposed to be there. Only 3,000? Those are all Jews, you know, that got saved in Acts chapter 2. The 3,000. That's it? How many Jews were there? And I believe all the Jews that, that loved the Lord, loved God and wanted to do right were there in Pentecost when they, like they were supposed to. And only 3,000 turned to the Lord. But I will declare forever, I will sing praises to the God of Jacob. That is the God of all gods. It can't be the God of Ishmael. 
It can't be the God of Muhammad. It can't be the God of Joseph Smith. It can't be the God of whoever. It can't be the God of Buddha. It can't be the God of Confucius. It can't be the God of Communism. It can't be the God of America. It has to be the God of Jacob. All the horns of the wicked, that's the power, also will I cut off. God steps in and speaks in verse 10. Verse 8 is the wicked. Verse 9 are the righteous. Back to 10, the wicked. I'm going to cut off their horns. I'm going to cut off their power. But... The horns of the righteous, the power of the righteous shall be exalted. Now, we don't do that ourselves. God will exalt us. God will exalt those Jews that did right, finally do right, and will do right by giving them that new earth. To dwell with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, their fathers. You know, Pharisees told Jesus one time, we be of Abraham. Abraham's our father. And Jesus was like, yeah, right. You don't do what he says to do. Because if you were of Abraham, you would know who I am and you wouldn't seek to kill me. Those Jews there, those Pharisees, will end up in hell. But those that chose to do what Jesus told them to do and that did get saved, those 3,000 Jews in, in, in Acts chapter 2, out of all the Jews, are going to be exalted. Everybody else is going to have their horns cut off and be cast into hell. Everyone in the world today, I'm, I'm going to say Acts 8, preferably 9, most often chapter 10, but once Paul really starts getting preaching, he gets the mysteries and revelation from God. Now, some preacher's not going to like me on this one. That the church, that, that those that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and his shed blood and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, their horns will be exalted with righteousness. New Jerusalem. Those that choose to reject the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the condemnation will be upon them. They do not have life. They do not have the Son. I mean the S-O-N. Those will be cut off and cast. Remember I told you about cut off? That's it. You're gone. You are cast into the lake of fire. You'll never get out. You will have no power in hell. You get that? But I'll have power in heaven. What's that? Being exalted, the Lord of God, Savior that died and loved me. And to sing praises to him. And to honor him. And to worship him with all the seraphim. With all the seraphim. With all the elders. With all the angels. And all those that did what God told him to do. You know, when we enter those new Jerusalem gates and when the Jews come in from the new earth and the, and the, the new heavens, there will be no sinner there, the Bible says. No adulterer, no liar, no fornicator. All righteous. And we'll have our horns lifted on high, exalted, it says here, but there'll be no pride. It's all being lifted up because of Jesus and only Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Everybody else who in verse 8 and the first half of verse 10, it's all about, about self. Religion is about self. Science is about self. Education is about self. The devil from the beginning said in Isaiah, is it 7 or is it verse 14? I will, I will, I will, I will. It's all about self for him. And then the positive, you know, thinking and all that in Genesis 3. Yea, has God said. The devil is a positive yes thinker. That we came from this, this palm scum and here we are today getting better and better. That's a lie. He's the father of all lies. He's the liar. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. 
Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in, that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art.